All right, guys, I'm back with part two. We're going to get right into the, I'm not sure what I want to call this image yet, but um, in part one, you saw me working on the very rough draft. And in this part two, we're going to clean up the lines and we're going to like prep this thing for painting and coloring. You know, I might add other elements. The mouth is still not in place. So let's just get right into it. I'm going to keep everything on one layer just because um, if I start separating layers, I'm gonna have to be shuffling back and forth between the two. Um, let's just see what's the most, you know, what stands out to me the most? What do I need changing? What what needs tweaking? And I want to add, I wanna add flowers and other brush or shrubbery and vegetation um, as much as I possibly can around this image. And I'm going to hopefully try to capture kind of like a warp effect so that again everything flows in this manner you know you got this going on like that so the focal point is the kid but it kind of flows around with the bug um, uh, another thing that I just noticed is I could theoretically move the wing in front of its uh, butt as we previously called it and um, obviously I'll do some sort of wing effect there to kind of give it a little bit of motion. Same on the other side. We want, we want giant wings, um, because if you're looking at it from like physics point of view, you need to have to be able to lift, um, something that big and probably heavy. You're going to want really big wings. So... I'm gonna rotate here and the wings the design of the wings you know and just in my head I'm thinking like a small wing that shapes here I'll draw it in 2d so basically this is kind of the look that I'm going for you know like the typical thing that you would see on on a fly and uh, just again remember a lot of a lot of drawing from your head a lot of objects and stuff you can break down into shapes and that's one of the things that I'm doing here, I'm breaking it down into a shape. And that's how that's how you'll want to approach almost anything. Um, for me, when I draw, for the longest time, I had this, this kind of stubborn habit of not using references. As a, as a kid, you know, in middle school and all that, and even early years in high school, I always looked at it as kind of like cheating, you know, a little... It's too easy if you look at a photo, you know, you're just you're just like a glorified printer or copier machine and I, I didn't like that appeal, you know. So I, I avoided it and and that's not necessarily true, you know, my views completely changed on that. But one thing that I did oh whoops, that's my phone. One thing that I earned out of the whole stubbornness is um you know, I drew everything from my imagination. I always try to like envision something and kind of push what this thing might, you know, might look like from my head without even even simple objects, things like a car or a building, you know, um, a lot of people, a lot of the animals I drew. And because I didn't draw them from a reference point and just using my head, um, even though I drew them incorrectly, it kind of taught me, you know, what to kind of look for. Um, okay, so let's do this. Cut down this eye a little bit. You, you always want to keep keep going back to you know different aspects of the image that you have so far, and make sure that everything is is shaping up to look good. Um, I always encourage or I would want to encourage you guys to constantly s like pull out and look at the whole image um, from you know further away and uh, you know you might spot mistakes that way kind of squint your eyes sometimes to you know check what the balance is looking like and and all that little you know all those little things they might they might help you you know um, I, I feel like looking at, you know, rookie sketches or somebody who's just getting into drawing, 
you look at a lot of um, you, you see gaps in technique um, for example you know they might focus really heavily on shading and stuff but their line art the thing that they're actually shading um, is you know proportions are off or something or or the perspective is a little bit slanted and I'm not saying I don't have any of those issues because I'm sure I do and a lot of times I go back to my my uh, even you know like last month's work and I'm like mm, I should have done that there uh, so I feel like that's probably never gonna really go away but the difference is uh, you have to be able to spot those mistakes you know you you gotta kind of like in order to improve you gotta see like okay I'm doing something wrong I'm not sure what it is yet but I know there's an issue there you know and I'm gonna try to kind of like work on it and I, I feel like I've had that mentality uh, for the longest time and I feel like I still do you know I'm not I'm not here you know claiming to be a master painter or anything um, I'm just trying to learn like many others and uh, one way I'm trying to do that is by painting a lot and uh, and uh, creating videos on YouTube certainly helps me with that you know it kind of focuses me to sit down and and sketch something out for you guys and talk about the process and in return talking about it kind of helps me understand it better and uh, you know hopefully that helps you guys as well so shaping up the mouth I don't like this under part right here I don't know what I'm doing I need I want to make it like curve under the eyebrow or the um, eye socket whatever um, we'll call it eyelid yes I think that's fine for the mouth I kind of want a more menacing mouth, so if we do that, I think I want to make the chin um, curl upwards a bit here to give it a more grumpy stance. And, uh, you know, again, this is just me kind of like winging it. I'm not really sure what what a giant killer bee's mouth is supposed to look like. I'm just trying to use shapes and trying to push like common um, human expressions to hopefully, so see that's just like a, like a puppy dog lip. We don't want that. So let's redo it. And a lot of times I'll spend a good, good amount of time kind of like going back and and uh, redoing things and you know fixing them until I feel like they look right not everybody has that um, you know and I'm not again I'm not saying that I'm the best or I'm really good at it but I have like an image in my head and I try to I try to push myself to kind of pursue this image until I'm seeing what I was going for or until I'm seeing something better than what I was originally planning on having. So I'm, I have the idea in my head, you know, I want this kind of mouth that, again, is not like too crazy looking. Maybe we'll do more round teeth. It's gonna look a little bit silly, but I think if I um, cut them down with the line art, make it a little bit more precise we're gonna get a more more killer bee look I'm gonna also turn down the brush size you know again I, I adjust it um, according to what I'm working on and uh, I don't always when I'm working on the sketch layer I don't always go this small just because um, I'm trying to get like the overall image done first I think we can do I think we can do um, teeth. Yes, I know bugs and insects and bees don't have teeth, but I don't want a regular insect. I'm not drawing. I don't like the bottom. So I don't like having the bottom teeth show up as well. Instead, I think we can transform tool. We grab these guys and move them down a little bit. Mm. 
I don't like the teeth either. I'm sorry, guys. I know, you know, maybe for some people it's hard to be patient and kind of like uh, already being drawing involves a lot of patience. And it might not be the most interesting thing to watch somebody like kind of try stuff again and again and again and struggle to get something that looks, you know, good. But um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it until. Oh, I kind of like this. Check this out. So we're gonna do two little pinchers, and I think that's fine. I think just two little pinchers works. do the nose sort of up there I think this is gonna give him kind of like this exotic bug look and you don't want to get near those things um, personally I wouldn't so I like that too I like that uh, it has that going for it I'm gonna curve this eye up a little bit more so that it's similar in size with the one um, that's to the left and we want the antennas. I kind of want really visible ones. And I don't want them all over the image. I just want to have the viewers really see. And I'm going to go for like a palm tree look. Uh, just because, it, you know, this is, even though I'm drawing from my head, that's exactly how I have that concept of those like palm tree things because I've seen other drawings of bugs or bugs zoomed in on like the Discovery Channel or something and they have like a layered antenna not all of them but some of them do and I I felt like you know even without really thinking about it or maybe with thinking about it but not even knowing it like subconsciously that's kind of like the design that I have pictured so let's throw that out there and I think drawing from your imagination involves a lot of that so let's uh, Let's move on to our little character here. Before I do that, I'm going to lower the opacity just a little bit. Or maybe a lot of bit. But we're going to lower the opacity. And I'm going to do um, some, some more kind of refinement on the foreground. So what we want to go for are a lot of little like giant flowers. Since our character that's hiding is uh you know has a flower strap to his back that's what he's all about and um we're gonna go for a lot of flowers a lot of uh, different leaves and we want movement as well so um drawing a flower from your head again it has a lot to do with shapes and you look at things like for uh f um foreshad no it's not foreshortening Right, that's the word. Uh, when an object, you know, your hand is flat like this, but when you're drawing a hand tilted towards you, you see that you're not drawing a lot. Like the elbow upwards takes a certain amount of your page up, but when it's like a sword that's uh, facing you, you know, all of a sudden, because it's foreshortened, it actually takes up way less space than, say, this. See, it's almost half of that. I hope that makes sense. Um, I feel like the space underneath my face that you see all that gray area, maybe not in this video, but in the future I'm going to try to uh, maximize the work flow or uh, take advantage of all the space that I have and uh, I'm going to hopefully be able to put in little diagrams or something for you guys to be able to uh, to help you understand um, you know, some of the more strange uh, kind of explanations that I have. So here, I'm going to try to curve this leaf a little bit. I want it to, I want the flower to be opening outwards. So we're gonna curve this side too. We're gonna foreshorten it, yes. It's, it's definitely, if you have done any other art research, I'm sure it's not a word that you have not heard before. You know, our teacher talked a lot about it and um, in art class in high school so um, I've heard it a lot too and it's kind of not something that I use on a day-to-day -day basis the the term that is you know obviously I foreshorten in in paintings that need it and it's kind of just something that you do but um, you know if you have not heard of what foreshortening is 
Well, let me be the first to introduce you to it. So, again, we're cutting into this leaf, you know. Cool. We have we have a giant flower leaf thing. And for colors, um, that'll be obviously a whole separate video. But coloring from your head, I think it's not that it takes as much skill. But it's also another kind of process that you have to that you kind of develop after after a while and um, sometimes you know I'll recolor a thing multiple times to get the color how I like but there's there's a, a kind of certain science behind it so you could learn you know you could learn color theory and you become like a dynamic painter and you kind of just paint things and they'll always end up looking good just because um, that's the way it's supposed to be you know um, for me, it's kind of different, I guess, because I've, my, for many years, I just drew with pencil in high school, many, many years. Um, my whole digital painting thing started in like ninth grade when I discovered that there was an app that lets me draw on my phone. You know, I didn't have a tablet or a good computer to paint on, so that's what I kind of switched to. And even then I drew in mainly black and white because I didn't understand layers and I didn't understand how they work and I um, avoided the whole color thing. And, you know, because it's not just a simple of, oh, let's now paint with color, you still have stuff to learn. Um, it took me a little bit, a couple years to, you know, get comfortable with colors. So I'm creating a new layer because we have, as you can see, I'm going to show you guys, we have the sketch layer on one, we have more sketch on a separate layer, and that's one of the flowers, and it's the flower in the foreground. Um, I guess I can move it to the layer up top. It doesn't really matter because it's black and white and nothing is filled in, so all the lines are pretty much, even if they overlap, you'll still kind of see them. Um, but anyways, I'll just move the flower to the foreground and we're going to continue adding more flowers. And I want all sorts of different flowers. Uh, just because I want this world to look not necessarily believable. Although, you know, it's always nice when somebody's like, wow, I wish I could, you know, go there. Or I would totally watch a movie about this. Um, the goal for me is to make a complete painting. You know, I want something that just looks nice and kind of gets the message across. And I don't know, just something interesting to look at. That's what I'm going for. So we'll have this sort of like fat dandelion type of deal and um, we're going to get, let's do, let's do this other sort of wild, almost a sunflower seed like plant that is going to have a little, little whiskers on the tips that um, could glow or something you know I don't want the when I'm coloring um, I'll also try to focus so that uh, most of the attention goes you know between the bee and the little character hiding so we're not gonna go for crazy oversaturated ridiculous um, colors we're just gonna go for you know a little bit more soft but a lot of movement that's more so what I'm going for than than ridiculous colors and you could probably see that from my style you know other paintings that I've done I I feel like uh, I like the dull colors a lot more and uh, I think part of that has to do with how I uh, kind of developed you know my art stuff a lot of it came from uh, public schools and my teacher often told me when you paint in acrylics and all that you don't want to go fully flat black and uh, I've kind of liked that tip and I almost always never go full black color on my paintings. So yeah the line art's in black but you know by the time that I'm done with the piece you can't really see the line art anymore just because I either delete it or completely draw over it. So here I think we can do like a leaf we do some like scribbles. Again, the idea is uh, that a lot of these leaves are being pushed out of the way because 
this bug has got huge wings and it's blowing them all outwards so I think that's fine um, I kind of have the image in my head of what I want the plants to look like you guys might not be able to tell right now but that's it's sort of like the case when uh, you know I know what's going on because half of it whatever's going on is still in my head I didn't like lay it all out and that's um, mainly due to like saving time and stuff so maybe that's not the right way to approach a video like this because the whole point of me trying to help you draw from your head is kind of like let you pick mine but I really want you to get into the mentality of not just copying what you see but attempting to recreate an idea you know it's all about for me at least it's all about the idea when when uh, painting from my imagination you know I of course you know you'll make mistakes you know this and that might not look right it doesn't look realistic or whatever but if you draw a subject enough even if it's from your head you know over time you'll kind of like develop a style for it and you'll be a little bit more proficient in helping this subject come to life so uh, whenever I used to draw a fish I didn't just look at fish references I just drew a fish and then I was like okay that looks kind of cool let's try this type of fish or let's see what would happen if I um, tried to draw like a giant whale shark thing you know whale sharks are a real thing but you know more whale than shark or more shark than whale and and doing challenges like drawing something falling into water or causing a giant splash you know things lit on fire all of that if you just try to draw from your head you'll get really cool results and I've had a lot of that I've done a lot of that and I still do that to this day you know I try to try to push myself with the type of settings that I have or the type of subjects that I'm painting and um, hopefully it shows you know hopefully it shows that I'm kind of like progressing and even though you know I'm, I'm going out out of my comfort zone although you know even though going out of your com comfort zone is nice that might not be the work that you're really confident in showing um, so here I'm just continuing to scribble in some of the plants and the plants behind the character I want them a little bit more out of focus so um, so it's fine if you know there's less lines or something or it makes no sense what you see there but um, what I'm trying to say is uh, I already forgot I'm like talking too much and and like trying to focus on this so as soon as I'm going back I'm like oh okay whoops all right, let's uh, turn the opacity back up. Now we have this giant mess going on, but uh, worry not. We'll use the eraser and we're gonna erase everything or a lot of the things uh, that don't involve you know, our main subject, which is the kid and the giant bee thing. The reason that I'm erasing this and you see a lot of the lines are still there is because that's a separate layer, right? Remember we did that earlier? We separated the layer um, the flower in the foreground and then I created a new layer to kind of keep adding other flowers so the flower in the foreground I'm gonna go ahead and drop that down uh, why am I dropping it well because I can no that's not really the reason the reason that I'm dropping it down is because it's still a sketch and uh, you know if I'm gonna eventually get rid of the line art I'm not too worried about having that be on the same layer so now that I've got these two on the set on separate layers I could um, I actually wanted to work a little bit more on the kid and get his his character you know a little bit more fleshed out I think I'm gonna try to drag this series not really drag it out but kind of separate it so that it sits in a comfortable area of um, you know it's gonna be kind of long it's a long series of videos I hope you guys don't mind I hope you enjoy you know hearing me ramble on and on about what I'm doing or what the process is uh, but the idea is that, uh, you know, you can, I'll, I'll focus on the different aspects and some of these just take a really long time to do. So I, I personally don't like sitting in one setting and drawing for like four or five hours. Uh, I like to take a lot of breaks and I come back to it and uh, a painting might piss me off where I'm like, dang it, it's just not working out. You know, 
I can't get the mouth of the B thing to look right. So, um, so I'll come back to it. So for the hair, hair you can draw in many different ways, but if you think of hair in general, how do you draw hair from your mind? How do you draw a face from your mind? Well, again, what are the shapes? What does it consist of? To draw a weave, a basket from your head, you just start weaving the strokes together and voila, you get a basket. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just putting locks of hair down in a shape that would, you know, kind of resemble a hairstyle, I guess. And there you go. And we've got we've got the start of hair. Uh, for his hands and all that, I want him to be armed. I want him to look prepared. You know, he's he's going out collecting killer bee honey or something like that, or the pollen from flowers, and that's what these tribes people eat. I don't know. There's you know, I could come up with a whole story if I wanted to. I don't really see the point of that now because you know that would just increase the video size. But we're gonna give him a bracer and we're gonna uh, make it cloth like I want this guy to look a little bit primitive you know not technologically advanced tribe it's gonna be kind of like that one book I forgot what it was called was something about the blue light where they go into Nevada and then travels forward in time um, to where like the whole world ended or whatever and now I don't know. It was it was, a, it was a cool book. We read it all the way in elementary school, and I kind of remembered it. Okay, so I got to make sure that the straps make sense in the way that they hug the character. Hmm. All right, his shorts are right here. We'll make them shorts uh, go down a little further and out more as well as over here <sighs> okay and his foot looks like like an elephant uh... <laughs> What do they call it? I don't know if there's a specific name for an elephant's foot. But we got to give him a little bit of a heel. And reach over and get all his toes in there and as well as the little this part. Uh, for feet, I have a hard time still to this day painting feet. I think feet are way harder for me than hands. But you can also break it down into shapes where you have like that slanted part, the toes on the bottom, <clears throat> excuse me, and you know, everything else. Uh, I'm gonna keep this simple. It's more of a cartoony little kid. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm gonna make him look really cartoony. He's just gonna have cartoony proportions. I'm gonna try and paint him a little bit more realistically. Um, that, Cause that's just the type of style that I, I tend to do for all my paintings. I don't like uh, drawing hyper realism because most of the time that requires you to look at a reference and study it intensely and zoom in like crazy and do all that and that's just not me you know I'm in my comfort zone <laughs> but I'm not necessarily painting things that are comfortable for me to paint obviously like with uh, most people who are uh, you know hobbyists or good at what they do you know a certain skill like a chef, he'll be better at cooking some things than others because he's had more experience cooking those th with those things, with those ingredients. You know, a musician might be better at playing one type of music. And same thing with artists, you know. You you paint a lot of people, you mo will most likely be better at painting a lot, like, people. If you do characters, you know, or creatures, then there you go. And it's really good to, to focus on on a particular type of thing and kind of specialize. You n you almost never want to try to be good at everything because then you will not be good at anything. Um, so I guess that, uh, you know, I'm not good at everything. I, I draw a lot of, a lot of creatures and uh, only recently did I 
start trying to focus on uh, improving drawing people. Um, okay, this is looking all right. I think I was gonna give him a um, a belt with one of those cloth thingies, but I don't know. That just kind of looks. We're gonna give him shorts. He's gonna be a tribal dude with shorts. I don't know if eh, I guess they kind of did have shorts. And then we'll chop off the. We won't make the bottom part of the shorts the leg part. Or whatever it's called. I don't. I don't want to make it smooth. Make it look a little bit more torn up. You know, even add a tear here or there, and that's gonna kind of push the whole agenda of. Yeah, this guy. He's surviving. He's out in the wilderness. Um, the. The fingers we will clean up. We can probably just do it right now. So I'm drawing knuckles, uh, with hands. And the reason that hands are kind of hard to draw, or pretty ridiculously hard to draw actually, is they're a lot of shapes. It's not just like a simple, you know, let's say seven or even eight sided shape, which is still not that simple. Hands are a lot more shapes than that. You know, you have, it consists of a lot of little squares combined. It's not even squares, it's like cubes. And that just forms like one finger and then you have the next finger next to it and then you have the the palm and the wrist so that's why hands are really hard to draw you could learn them and I obviously advise you to take the time to you know find videos and and all that and resources of uh, anatomy uh, I keep saying I'm gonna probably for, always keep saying anatomy um, and just use that word because it's really important you know find those types of videos that break down what the human arm consists of what sort of bones are there and uh, you can break those down into basic shapes and you can draw the hand from any angle holding anything doing whatever and you'll be able to do that and that's sort of what requires ultimately what um, what requires you to be able to to draw anything you know is kind of understanding the subject and how to break it down into a basic shape so that you can uh, put that shape in whatever perspective or whatever angle you want and that'll result in uh, in being able to draw that thing and I'm not going to be able to show you guys all that in one image but hopefully this is kind of like pushing you towards the overall idea of how to do it and I advise that you even try something like this but just don't copy this painting because it won't help you as much as something like um, you know for example you say okay I'm not gonna draw a killer bee chasing a little boy let's do um, a seagull and it's it's trying to dodge a griffin you know so automatically that's gonna force you to like think about a lot of things and try to try to draw these things I don't know you know what I mean hopefully you kind of get the idea don't copy the the whole image stroke by stroke because you'll make more mistakes that way you're gonna you're gonna draw something and you're like okay you know done but then you zoom out a little bit and you're like wait why are my eyes uneven or way shorter or way longer than his and that's just what happens when you know you're so focused on getting like an exact line and it's best to look at the process you know look at the process and uh, pretty much start there so we've got the flowers will oh actually I'm still on the little guy layer whoops so I'm gonna delete these and then switch over to the flowers raise the opacity or the brush size a little bit and we're gonna do that alright I think in the next scene we're gonna start heading into a little bit of color um, maybe I'll do a black and white and from the black and white we will play around with um, color 
I think one more thing is missing. Actually, before I go, a couple more minutes, let's draw in his back flower. <laughs> it's not a backpack. Um, I want I want it to be something that shades him, and then I want that shade to cast an well, like an interesting shadow onto the character, so that the character is. Um, so it just looks cool, okay? <laughs> That's my goal. I want to paint something that looks cool. I want it to really almost fully cover him up. And then we'll have leaves that extend outwards. Uh, some of these leaves will probably end up uh, being hidden by uh, flowers in the foreground. But that's okay, you know. Sometimes less is more. But that does also does not mean that you shouldn't draw more things. You can, you can, for example, drawing a car, you can literally draw everything, the transmission, the engine, everything, and then you end up, the only reason you would do that is to just put panels on top of it and paint that. You know, somebody would say, oh, that's a huge waste of time. And while it probably is, at the same time, you get like the real representation of why the car looks the way it does is because it has to fit all those things underneath and that's the same thing with anatomy you know you draw the skeleton and then you just cover all that up with skin you know somebody was like well why would you why wouldn't you just draw the skin right away because you don't end up like forming the shape of the human you know, you might miss like subtle bones because we have a lot of bones in our bodies and, you know, like the collarbone, if you end up not doing that, then you wouldn't see where you should highlight and where you should shade. And uh, that's, you know, that's a huge part of, of being able to draw dynamically is to, to get the form right. And after the form is in place, you know, coloring and shading and highlighting is a lot easier. All right, we've got the, his backpack sort of in order. I think I'm going to, for the sake of being able to see what is actually going on, I'm gonna to switch to the flower layer and erase a little bit around the flower, the backpack flower. And uh, we're gonna, yeah, that's kind of cool, right? Hopefully you guys think so too, you know, hopefully I'm not the only one sitting here like, yeah, I'm so cool, because that's not what I'm saying. But, I, you know, when I'm happy about something that I'm producing, I think it shows in my work. Maybe, maybe it, um, you know, it mostly shows in the way I act, but it's a good feeling to be able to kind of have an idea in your head and sketch it out and it's it takes shape and becomes a real thing that you can kind of look at and be like, oh, that's cool. It's even more satisfying when uh, when doing an animation. I haven't done many, but animations, you, you like pretty much bring the thing that, uh, you know, you spent so long drawing to life. It's uh, kind of an awesome, awesome experience. Uh, here, I'm gonna reshape the foot a little bit and I want to slant slant the foot downwards more so that it will uh, match the other leg. I think I'll also get rid of the pinky and we'll simplify that. But I want to have these things sort of point um, in a direction. And then we want to also Kind of define where the shadow might be and I'll do that with uh, just a lowered opacity so my opacity is not fully at a hundred so when I go over it once you see that it gets a little bit darker if I go over it again it gets even darker but um, I'll go over it once and that's gonna help us kind of um, lay down an approximation of where our shading will take place. You know, we want this foot shaded. Yeah, this guy's gonna be in a lot of shade, but um, 
parts of him are going to be pretty colorful, I think, or at least like the rocks around him. There will be some sunlight that pierces through, and uh, that's going to help drive the eye over. Uh, anyways, this is part two. It looks like not much was done, but I probably spent so much time talking about everything. So hopefully, hopefully it's coming along great, and hopefully you guys are learning something. Anyways, again, like, comment, subscribe, whatever. Do what you got to do. Um, thanks for watching, and hope you have an awesome day.